Okay, so let's take a look at how that happens. Okay, these are clearly two skiers, we can tell, because if you look at, if you look at the feet here, right, see how mashed up the toes are? I mean, that's from the boot, it's just crushed in here. Furthermore, we can tell they're both Rookie Academy participants who have just uh, gotten done watching themselves ski on camera. <laughs> right? They're just in a wallowing in self-pity. They're just like, oh my god, this is... Been there, been there this week? Yeah. Yeah, excellent, good. If you haven't, um, you will be. Um, okay. When you first learn a skill, um, what happens is a signal has to get from the limb that felt something. It's got to get back up to the brain. It's got to rattle around in this glowing light mess. That glowing light mess has to then decide a reaction to what it just felt. And it's going to get sent back down to the limb so it does something. A simple thing would be this. You ever seen um, uh, a kid learn a, a hot stove for the first time? Yeah, what do they do? They put their hand on there. Do they scream right away? No, Takes a little while. It's not a little while, but you're looking at this like, oh, that's going to be, that's going to end really badly, right? You kind of like laughing at it, but you're looking at it like it's going to end really badly, right? And eventually the kid pulls away. They've already burnt themselves, right? Now let's say you put your hand down a hot surface. How quickly do you pull your hand away? Immediately. You generally, before you burn yourself, right? It's a, it's a delayed, but not much. I mean, I put my leg against my motorcycle pipe the other day and I didn't burn myself because I quickly moved away from it. it. What's interesting about it is I didn't realize it was hot until after I'd pulled it away. So the reaction happened with no cognitive process whatsoever. Every motor skill is like that, okay? You just learn that one with the heat really early on and it's pretty, it's pretty basic and primary so it happens very quickly. It's delayed, but it's, it gets really, really fast to the point of it protects you. Not any different than skiing. Okay, um, if you look at a beginner, they're falling, they're falling you down the hill. Maybe it was you with your trainer, right? And that trainer hits a bump and they just go whoop right over it. Somebody in the group hit the bump and they're and they're all over the place, right? The reason that happened, or in a beginner skier, the reason that happened was the trainer hit the bump and they had an automatic response. The student hit the bump, or the trainee had hit the bump, and their response was not the same because they had never felt that bump. You guys wouldn't have that experience, but an absolute beginner would, where the ski slid and they didn't know what to do with it, right? So what happens is they fly back. The next time they hit that bump, that response looks a little smaller because they start to analyze the problem and have a different solution. Essentially, the signal goes up from the foot, up to the brain, says I'm out of balance. What do I do? Oh, I gotta move myself forward. How would I do that? Maybe I can throw my hips forward. Maybe I could flex my ankle. But by that time, you're on the ground, right? Okay. Well, after that happens a few times, your brain says, oh, I've, I've been there before. I know that I need to flex my ankle. So they hit the bump. And instead of flying down, it just looks really awkward while they do this. <laughs> then they're still going, okay? What's happened then is a cognitive process happened that said, okay, I've, I've hit the bump. I need to flex my ankle. I know how to do that, right? And eventually, that process gets faster and faster because it repeats itself, right? It gets faster and faster to the point of where it becomes no longer conscious, and I don't have to think about it at all. I don't have to analyze the problem. The problem just fixes itself. But that only happens from the repetition of hitting that bump over and over and over and over again. And eventually, that skier just wanders right over it. Does that make sense? Okay, you've experienced that before, right? Can you remember the first time you ever skied or rode moguls? How horrible was that? <laughs> it's still shit, right? <laughs> but if you, what's your name? Russell. Russell, right. But if you watch yourself ski it from however long ago it was shit, now it's still shit, you'd look at that person and say, that's pretty good. Because, well, your, your previous self would look at you now and say, well, that's pretty good because you're not hitting the ground all over the place. Well, I have never actually skied with you, so I don't, I don't know, but I'm making the assumption you're not hitting the ground all over the place. That you're, you're actually hitting the bumps and you're making the skis basically go where you want them to do. It's not shit, it feels like shit now because you know what better is, but if you didn't know what better is, at least you're, you're successfully getting to the bottom, okay? Well, let's take a look at why that happens in the body, what happens, okay? So there's some reasons 
that these things happen. We're going we're gonna to talk about the learning process and the stages next time. But what we're going to talk about here is the, um, uh, the actual physical process that makes that reaction time change. Okay, So we can understand from a physical process what you're going through and why that I can't do it feeling and that frustration is so incredibly important. Okay, um, Through practice and experience, some stuff happens in your body. I think one of the pieces is this. Um, so all of your movements come from electrical signals from some part of your brain or, sp or spinal cord to the end of the nerve to the muscle spindle that fires the muscle, makes you move, right? Did I get it right? Yeah, good. Yeah, pretty close, right? Okay. I, we're not going super deep. Dude, I got like five minutes here. Come on. Yes, a bit vague. But, bastard. Now, you, now you're definitely not getting a visa to the US. That's what I'm saying right there. Okay. So, what's your name? Okay, if anybody wants more detail exactly on how that works, the neurology of, 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 of innervation, you just talk to, uh, to Callum, okay? So, no, <laughs> I'm just giving you crap. Uh, where was I? <laughs> okay, so let's say that nerve pathway hasn't been fired very much, right? Essentially what you've got is um, a wiring system that hasn't really been used, okay? If it hasn't been used very much, like anything in your body, a muscle that hasn't been worked very much, right? It's not very strong. It's not, in this case, it's not very insulated, okay? What you don't have is a certain compound around that wire that's a fat compound, basically called myelin, that insulates it so the signal is more efficient getting from point A to point B, all right? It's kind of like, um, you ever looked at the wiring? And think of the wiring that goes between these lights in here, right? It's probably just got a little bit of thin plastic around it, a little rubber around it. But how about the wire that comes into the building that brings all the electricity in? How big is the insulation around that thing? OK, how about the wiring that comes from the, um, uh, the, the power converters that are out there as you go towards Cadrona and come back into town? How big are those wires? Things are huge, right? Because they're carrying, and they're, they're much more efficient at, tra at transporting electricity than these ones, right? Well, what happens as you, as you fire a nerve system over and over and over again, your body says, I'm going to use this more often. So I need to be more efficient how the electrical signal operates. And basically does this, right? Here's a nerve that has no, um, no, no insulation on it, right? This has not been used very much, or it's degenerated because of like ALS or something. But in this case, it's, it's, we're, we're looking at one that has essentially no insulation or very little insulation. You have this really strong electrical signal that little bits of it are going to get down here, but most of it's going to bleed off. So it's a very inefficient process. Does that make sense? Now this one, on the other hand, has a myelin sheath that's around it, which is fat cells that code around there. right? And look at how fast the electric, well, electric still goes the same speed it always goes, but it gets there more efficiently because you have less bleed off. Does that make sense? So essentially, more signals going takes less effort to make things happen. Make sense? OK, here's what's important about myelin. It doesn't happen very quickly. It's like building a muscle. Think of how long it takes to build those beachies that you're looking for, you know, <laughs> that Josh is looking for, right? No, think of how long it takes to build strength, right? To get a muscle to react. The first thing it does when you when you, when you start working out is it breaks down. You're really weak after a workout, right? You're not strong after a workout. You're not strong for a while after a workout. You break down, you get weak, then what do you do? You eat, hopefully very quickly, like 30 minutes after a workout, high protein, enough carbs to process the proteins. You sleep, you sleep a lot, you hydrate, your body starts to repair, you don't work that same muscle the next day, you work it a couple days later, and eventually over time, over weeks, over months, you start to grow greater strength. It's the same thing that happens here. This happens a little quicker, but not much, right? Essentially, what happens is the myelin gets coated. The more times you use it, the more times your body goes through and rebuilds and reinforces in this case, right? This happens predominantly while you're sleeping, while you're hydrated, right? So if we're out drinking every night, 
and we're having a great time in Wanaka. We're just getting hammered every night. It's working out really well. We are doing have we're accomplishing one goal of having a great time in Wanaka. We're probably not accomplishing the goal of building more myelin that will help us ski better because we're inter interrupting the cycles that will allow that to happen, which is sleep, eat, hydration. Okay. All right. There's one more piece that happens with this that's pretty important. Okay? Any questions on this so far? Good? How am I doing on time, boss? You tell me when I got to stop. Ken, you got it. That's easy. Okay. <clears throat> one thing that's really important about this, ah, that's what I was trying to think of. One thing that's really important about this is that myelin only really grows, goes one way. Okay? So, as you coat myelin, it really doesn't degenerate. There's some, ev there's some evidence from a while ago that says that it degenerates after a certain age, after 50, after 60, but what's really been shown is it doesn't really, right? You know that concept of uh, once you learn to ride a bike, you never forget? Mm -hmm. That's actually basically true, that once you have the skill set of riding a bike, what I mean by a skill set of riding a bike is that you have done it enough times that the electrical signals have gone through the nerves enough times that those nerves are coated with fat and the signal gets to the, the right limbs and knows how knows the in the right order so things move right even if you don't ride a bike for 30 years it might take you a morning to figure out how to do it again but it's not going to take you the same amount of time as you learned it the first time because that wiring is already there you might not be as good at it because muscles are gonna, the muscles aren't gonna be where they are, the fitness might not be there, but the basic motor mechanics will be there, right? Which means that all of your basic movements that you use, your primary motor patterns, which is what basic movements are, are permanent. Does that make sense? So the things you automatically do when you just go free skiing, you're kind of skiing like this, right? or you're riding sloppy like that, right? Whatever you're doing is your permanent pattern. You can't, you can't get rid of those. You can't unlearn them. You cannot break bad movement hat patterns. What you can do <coughs> is find one movement patterns you can't do and learn them. You can practice them like they're new. You can practice them over and over and over again until this little pathetic nerve here that doesn't do very much looks more like that and has just as strong a signal as this wiring that produced the more negative movement pattern, right? So one message here that's really important to take away is whatever your faults are, they're not faults. They're skills, right? Whatever your inefficiencies in your skiing and riding are, they aren't inefficiency, they're skills. They're things you own, they're things you know how to do. Your goal is not to get rid of them. Your goal is to learn new ones so you can make a better choice at different times. Does that make sense? Yep. Your weaknesses are absolutely your strength. Strengths. What we want to give you is more strengths so you can make better choices. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. Any questions on that? Because there's one more physical change that happens that makes things, makes skiing really work. Okay? All right, let's look at this guy. Anybody know who that is? Anyone? Anyone? Marcel Hersher. He rips. He skis almost as well as Garrett. Um, he's playing Pokemon on his phone back there. He doesn't even know what's going on. Okay, so there's some stuff going on in this picture, right? Um, are his feet aren't even on the ground. Some really, look, look, that ski is not even touching the ground. There's a little tip is on there. But this is the one for anyone who doesn't know how to ski as a snowboarder. That's the one he wants to land on. <laughs> Right? Okay? There's some bad things that could happen right here. Right? He's in the air. He's got no input from the ground. And he's going to land. And he's going to win this race. Which means that when he lands, he's going to have to make some immediate adjustment to the ground to make sure the ski carves. Right? This is no different than going off a jump. No different than if you're on a board and it skips somewhere. Right? This person's going to have to make some immediate adjustments. Now, it would be a pretty long path if the signal had to do this. He's going to have to feel something. It's going to have to go up to the brain. 
and it's going to have to come back down to here. Even with all the myelin coating and all the sheath, all the, the, the thickness he's got on those nerves, right? And the, and the, the efficiency of the electrical signal, signal could go. That's a really long path. That's going to leave a lot of room for mistakes. And therefore, it probably won't be very successful. So the body's found another way to compensate for that. It starts shortening this loop. You know what I mean by the loop? Input, processing, solution. Yeah? Starts to find another solution to the loop. It sends it from somewhere else. Starts moving things from the spinal column, essentially, right? The spinal cord can send certain signals too. So oftentimes, when something is really well learned, it's been done enough times, it no longer requires a lot of conscious thought, and it becomes, you ever heard the term muscle memory? Yeah, it doesn't really exist, right? What that really is is myelin combined with a shorter looping process so that it becomes this response that happens really quickly, which, by the way, is why there's less delayed reaction with the stove, because that's not a signal that's coming from your brain. It's like, I already know that's hot. You're going to notice it's hot later. Cool? Right? Our goal here is for you to get such great new skills that over the process of time, one, that loop gets faster because this nerve becomes that nerve. And after that happens, this loop becomes that loop, and you're ripping. Does that make sense? OK. Think about this for a second. That's a lot of stuff your body has to do, right? It's not just about learning to ski and ride better. It's about growing the body parts. The, the, it's about growing the cells that around the nerves that are going to allow that to happen, and changing your physiology in a sense so that the signals are coming from different places with new skills. Think of how long that takes. The, my purpose for saying that isn't to say that it can't be done, or we're talking years down the road. It's to set appropriate goals. Pick small things you wish to achieve. right? Set time frames, saying, I don't want to achieve it within an hour. I know that I can learn it in an hour or two hours, but it's probably going to take me a couple weeks to get some mastery of it. right? So. Embrace the frustration that you might have of learning, knowing that while you're going through, things aren't happening as quickly as you'd like them to. Your feet aren't moving in the new movement pattern as fast as you'd like it to happen, or your body, your core, your pelvis, whatever your trainer's getting you to do. What's happening is by having that repetition over and over and over again, all the time, 100% of the time, you're beginning to enforce a new movement pattern so it becomes your most preferable one. <laughs> Does that make sense? OK. So if we know that the only way to create the new movement pattern is repetition. Repetition creates myelin. That increases the signal strength and starts to move things to a more automatic place, reflexive action, shorter loop. What would happen if you just practiced for like, OK, I've been told to do outside ski turns, or I've been told to do uh, re um, uh, performance uh, medium turns with, um, uh, with down on waiting or retraction if we want to call that right. I have an exercise that I've been asked to do that's supposed to change how my body operates. right? And then I do that for the amount of time that my trainer asks me to do it. But as soon as my trainer says, OK, we're done practicing that, I go back to my old movement pattern. What am I reinforcing when I go back to my old movement pattern? You're, re you're reinforcing the pattern that you're trying to choose not to do. Because even though you can already do it, you are still building myelin. You're still getting more automatic in that. So whatever the change is you're trying to make, it can't just be on the runs you're practicing. It can't be just when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when your trainer is, is, um, is looking at you. If you really want to make a change, it's got to be all the time. You can't switch off and just go to a relaxed pattern. You have to sometimes. Sometimes you just go too overloaded to do stuff, and you just need to chill. That's fine. But be, do it with consciousness. Know that the only way to take this to that and this to that is through constant repetition. That make sense? Any questions? Cool. OK. So change is impossible, but you do have a choice to learn something new or different. And to do that, it's all about focus, and repetition.
Thanks, guys. Cool.